This is the Soulfully Casual Podcast hosted by Matty Ice. And now, your host, Matty Ice. Hello, everyone, and welcome to an episode of the Soulfully Casual Podcast brought to you by Matty Ice Media. As always, I'm your host, Matty Ice, and my apologies for not coming to you on Monday. Normally, I like to have a nice Monday, Wednesday, Friday cadence with my content, but uh, over the weekend, I celebrated my son's first birthday. Anybody who has children out there knows what that milestone feels like, most likely. Um, Probably in other years that don't involve the pandemic or COVID-19, we might have had a little bit of a a more grandiose celebration of his first year of existence, but um, we stuck to the traditional six people we've seen for the entirety of basically 2020 and now 2021. My wife and I have been extremely careful in that regard, mainly for my son's uh, well-being, but also for ours too. I mean, really, if you think about it, we're trying not to get sick so that we don't get him sick. And while that isn't a guarantee in any other time period, going out of our way to avoid COVID-19 just felt like the right thing to do. But celebrating a year of life, and I talked in other episodes about parenting, and about how there's so much about parenting that is not told to you before you get into it. It's a choice that you make, um, or it's a choice that you don't make, right? Like there's nothing wrong with either choice to have kids or not have kids. I think too often we spend too much time trying to shame people into thinking that they have to stick to some specific ideal that has been sold to us here in America. That having a family, getting married, having kids is something that you have to do in order to validate your existence. And while I don't subscribe to that, it's a choice that I've made. My wife and I decided to get married. We decided to have kids and go that route. And that's where we are. But along the path of that first year, there's so much that happens. Uh, and there's so much that happens that deviates from the, the happy path, if you will. Most of the time, we are uncomfortable with this. We don't necessarily like to have our boats rock, so to speak, uh, because we're you know hoping to get by every day with as least, uh, the, excuse me, the least amount of stress and uh, problems possible. Parenting isn't like that at all. Parenting is basically seemingly one problem after another that comes up, especially in the first year of life. Um, Watching my son go from the the day he was born until now has just been an incredible journey. And it really took me the whole year to kind of figure that all out, to really appreciate it. When you're in the moment of something, it doesn't have to be parenting. It can be anything. Uh, You know, I'm sure sports players go through this. I'm sure uh, anybody in their career goes through it. Sometimes it takes the culmination of your, or the end of a certain period to really appreciate what it is that you just accomplished. And over the course of the year in parenting, when you're in the foxhole trying to figure out what to do, you know, with your spouse uh, or your partner, it can be very daunting. It can feel as if you are sort of in quicksand and you can't get out. And I know for me personally, it took some time for me to really start, you know, expressing enjoyment over the process. Uh, for much of the first, I would probably say, four months of his life, it felt like a job. It felt very much like something that I had a to-do list for. I had to make sure he was fed. I had to make sure he was changed, make sure that he went to sleep, make sure that we held his neck, you know, things like that. There's so much to think about and so much to do that I think it's inevitable for people to sort of lose the ability to enjoy it and be within the moment, be present, uh, because there's just so many things that are happening and you have to keep up with it. And while the appointments that you have as far as doctor's appointments are concerned dwindle as your you know child gets older, um, you sort of feel less and less uh, grounded, so to speak, because everything is changing in front of you and you're just trying to keep up. But when you get to that milestone, when you get to that first year, I can tell you specifically that I felt very proud, not just of my son for having grown up so much, right? And having developed into the little boy that he is, But I was very proud of us as a family, my wife and I in particular, because we had learned to grow into each other. When a lot of times, I think a lot of couples grow away from each other because the nature of raising a baby is so difficult. Uh, But my wife and I had the opposite effect. We grew into each other. And very recently, as we were approaching this one year, we felt like we had reached some kind of a groove, you know, like we were, um, you know, in sync in such a way that really was, was making us happy. And being on the same page when it comes to parenting, being on the same page with how you'd like to raise your child, things that you'd like to make sure that they understand, um, values that were given to you. You know, knowing that we're on the same page on those 
I found myself celebrating all of that in the moment. And when I think about taking our child home and him not being able to hold his neck up, has no idea what's going on around him. Everything that he is seeing is new. Like everything is new. And in retrospect, it's all new to us too. Like for, for real, if I'm being real about what the process was like, it was very much us getting to know each other. I had a boss who told me that when he had his first child, it was like they were strangers. It's like you're meeting somebody for the first time. Except in this case, the person that you're meeting is somebody that needs you to take care of them. They're relying on you for everything that they need in life. And they're also relying on you to know what to, to learn, to know how to develop, right? To steer them in the right direction. And I think I said on that episode that that doesn't stop. It just evolves. You end up being a parent to your child for their entirety of their life and your life. And you parent them in different ways. But along the way in that first year, you change so much as a parent from feeding him every two hours to making sure that he can actually get some sleep to now we're basically treating him like a tiny human. It's really fun to watch. It's really fun to watch him know what we're talking about, recognize faces, recognize names, be able to look at a human being when you say, where's mama, right? Where's bro bro, which is what we call the dog since Winston is a little tough for him to get out. Um, it's just, it's, it's mind boggling to me how much happens in that first year. And when we're sitting there looking at him, absolutely miserable in a party hat, didn't know what to do with a cupcake. It was like, you know what? This seems really fitting because it's another new experience that he's never had. He's been around a lot of people, at least a lot of people, the same people I talked about, right? My, you know, my family members. He's been around those people. He's been around them all at the same time. But being around them in a way in which all of their attention was focused on him in a celebratory manner, he had no idea how to process it. And I looked at him and had a very similar feeling because, or not even a similar feeling. I felt like as if I knew he was my son because I go through that. And along the path of the first year, I've looked at him so many times and seen either myself, my wife, my parents, her parents. It's really, really, really amazing to see that. What ends up happening is you get to this in this next year and things continue to, to evolve and change, right? But they do so in a less rapid manner. Going from age one to two, the things that we're gonna see the most are his movement and really his speech. And while he can say five or six words very competently, I mean, not the way that I'm saying them clearly into this microphone. If I had him sitting here with me, he, was, he would not be able to say all six of those words in a way that would articulate themselves the way I am now. But when you ask him on his level, where's mama? And he looks at mama, that's how you know. And he says it back to you. It's really awesome, right? But after that, he becomes a tiny version of us, us adults. His needs are the same. His wants are the same. What differs is how we articulate that, right? And what you end up realizing, or I realize, I don't want to say this for every parent because I don't think it's necessarily true for every parent, but what I realized is that how much changes in a year. And I think I've mentioned this a few times, but when I actually started to realize the power of that, the gravity of those words, was watching my son turn one year old, realizing how much had changed in a year. And as I always say on this show, it got me to thinking about some things. It got me to thinking about how much changes in a year for everybody. And think about this last year of a pandemic. We're basically there, folks, right? I think March 16th was the day that everything shut down, at least here in Northern Virginia. And at that point, I really wasn't comprehending the situation because I had a 10 year, a 10 day old at home. I had no idea what was going on. Like, honestly, I had no clue. Um, but thinking about it now, it's like, well, what has changed in this past year? How many things have changed for the positive? The reason why I bring this up is because I was thinking about, uh, people's perspectives over the last year, people's attitudes over the last year. And I have to admit a troubling and common theme of, of this last year has been how much it sucked for everybody. And I honestly, you know, have really listened to a lot of these different stories because I think for certain people, you know, depending on where you are in your life, depending on your life situation, the way that you grew up, the idea of your life sucking is different for everybody. There are so many different people who have different needs, different wants, and just different 
uh, lifestyles that it's all a matter of perspective as to what stinks for you. Like what stinks for me is not nearly what stinks for a good majority of the, the country, right? Um, I talked about school kids and about how there's been a lot of focus on how bad it's been on school kids. And I don't discount that whatsoever. I know that for a lot of younger kids and teenagers too, but to I think about the younger kids sometimes too, who have a little bit less of an ability to sort of comprehend what's going on around them and really grasp the situation by the horns. Um, I understand that it's tough. You know, I have a, a nephew that's in kindergarten and imagining asking a six-year-old to sit in front of a computer screen for five hours a day. It's a huge ask. You can't even get a six-year-old to sit in front of the TV to watch a TV show he likes for six hours a day, let alone to do schoolwork. It's been hard on a lot of people. It's certainly been hard on a lot of people in terms of economic stability. There have been tons and tons of people, people that we know personally, who have lost jobs, been laid off of jobs, been on hiatus from their job. And what does that mean for them? It means no income or less income, which has a ripple effect not just down the economy, but down those families too. Not being able to provide as much as they could, potentially not being able to provide, period, right? And then you have a lot of people who I don't think realize how much of an opportunity there is or has been to spin this positively. I look at it in my, my own way. For me, the year 2020 or this last year of the pandemic has not been a tragedy in any way. It's been a tragedy in the sense that we have not been able to see people that we love. It's been a tragedy in the sense that my son has only gotten to meet his grandparents on my side of the family one time. That's maybe tragedy is too strong of a word. It's sad, right? It's not something that you'd want. Um, there's tons of our friends who have wanted to meet him. There's tons of our friends who have wanted to be able to hold him and see him during these years. And they haven't been able to do that because it is what it is. You know, the pandemic is what it is. Um, but there's also been a lot of opportunity there for us. There's been opportunity to be present at home. There's been opportunity to be present with our family, with our son. And if I'm being perfectly honest, there's been opportunity for me to start new ventures like this show. I can't tell you what the last year has been like when once, you know, one, well, actually not the last year. I can't tell you what life has been like since the show has come about. I started this show, I started my YouTube channel, and it was really just a creative outlet for me to do something besides being a parent. Because the rest of the world was not open to me. The rest of the world, including my friends, was not open. I can't do a lot of the things that I once did prior to COVID-19 or being a parent. So my perspective has been, I need to figure out a way in order to diversify my life, right? And that doesn't just apply to those of you who are married, right? It applies in a lot of ways. Being stuck inside, doing the same things, not having a variety to your life. It can crush a lot of people. It can make people feel like they are stuck. And I happen to have creative juices that started flowing. Wanted to start this podcast for a long time, for a couple of years now. And finally being able to do it, that felt like an opportunity. It felt like something that I took advantage of. That this time at home, without commutes, and without having to be away from the house as much as we were, now has afforded me the ability to put some extra time into this to prioritize my free time in a way that allows me to be creative, to create content for you. That has been awesome. All the extra time at home for a lot of families has been a detriment in the sense that it's hard because you're not really meant to be around like your spouse as often as I think a lot of people are. And my wife and I definitely struggled, but I think we were struggling because we're struggling trying to figure out what to do as parents. And then on top of it, you know, we're trying to, we're worrying about our son, but also we're working through what it's like to be at home with each other. I admittedly went through some mental health struggles at the beginning of this last summer, and I just really didn't find myself in a good place. I, I was unhappy with some things in life and hadn't really been honest with myself about them. And I came clean about them. And that's, again, another opportunity, being able to take the leap and make things better actively make things better instead of just finding or finding somebody to blame for it taking the reins making it something that i could actively make better another opportunity there and my wife and i managed to do that we managed to be able to work through some bumpy patches to figure out how we can better communicate 
it helps us as a couple, it helps us as parents, and ultimately, I think once the world opens up, it helps us as human beings. Because I think we are going to struggle as a society to sort of come back to reality. We have been, for the most part, depending on where you live and depending on what your uh, limitations have been, we have been a very secluded group of people for a year now. We're not really seeing people on the regular. And I have said in, pa in past episodes that it's going to be an adjustment when we finally get back there. My wife joked about they should have classes that sort of train us again on how to act in public because so many people haven't had to interact or think about a perspective other than their own that going out into the world is going to be jarring. And I think there's going to be some definite growing pains once we are you know, out in the world in mass. But there's opportunities there individually in your homes. The better you communicate within your home, hopefully the better you communicate and connect with other people. So doing that with my wife, doing that via this show, those have been some things that I think have been opportunities. And I've also taken opportunity for, for personal growth, taking care of your house, uh, you know, making fixes to your house, uh, uh, making updates, putting flooring down, things like that. Perhaps these aren't projects that you're thinking about when you're off to work and off into the world as often as you are. And I think those are opportunities. I really think that there has been an opportunity to put a positive spin on this. For those who have high school, you know, teens, Yes, you have not been able to be around your friends a lot, but you've had the ability to be able to wake up and go to school without having to get on a school bus or drive to school. You have the ability to at least connect with your friends virtually. The way that the world is now, everything is electronic. Everything is at our fingertips. And while we can't physically touch those people, when you look at these teenagers, like I see the kids in my neighborhood uh, a lot of times, they're with each other, but they're not with each other. Like they're on their phones. So. How much of a physical, you know, connection do they really have if they're really all focused on the content on their phones? But again, it's a lot of parents to sort of know their teens a little bit, understand what they're going through, be a part of their schooling, be a part of their education and their uprising. Because for a lot of these older teenagers, you know, they're going to be virtual schooled for basically the entirety of this year. And if they're a senior, they're going to go out into the world and have to figure it out again the way that it once was right like we will eventually get back to that we will eventually get back to a place where it is more common for us to be out than it is for us to be in and most of us are going to have to make a conscious decision about what our lives are going to look like once we choose to get the vaccine for my wife and my and i we realize that we need to seize the opportunity and privilege of getting the vaccine that being able to have it and get it means that we are protected from getting this virus, at least as protected as we are going to get. And we can't really do a whole lot more for my son. He can't get vaccinated. We certainly don't want him to get vaccinated without there being real solid evidence that it is safe for him. And he's, we're just going to have to live with that risk. I do risk assessment for a living. We're going to have to do that. And I think those are the decisions that you make, right? But we wouldn't be able to effectively make that decision had, be, had we not seized the opportunity of this past year of being at home. But I also think about this too. And I want you to think about this in terms of your life. Have there been opportunities that have gone by the wayside that you have not seized, that you could have, that you either were too stuck in the way that you were thinking prior to this pandemic? Perhaps you've been thinking negatively during the pandemic. Perhaps you're somebody who has been angry this entire year because you think it's dumb because germs are germs, right? Have you missed opportunities there? Have you been focused too much on how it's inconvenienced you, how it's changed things in the negative for you, when you may have had an opportunity to take that negativity and turn it into a positive, right? And think about how many things change over a year just in general. Think about the biggest moments in history. Think about World War II, the atomic bomb. There was a race from many countries to be the first out there. And think about in a calendar year, we went from having no idea if it was possible to the bombing in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. In a year, we obtained nuclear warhead power. Look at what the world has become since then. Thankfully, it hasn't been worse. In a calendar year, we have seen the Berlin Wall fall, right? We've seen the USSR fall. We've seen 9-11 happen. We've seen, you know, many things happen in the Donald Trump era. A year can be very significant. And while we think about it in terms of, wow, a year is so long, you're right? And like, once we get there, it's like, man, that year was short. 
when you go back and look at each year, many, many, many things can happen. And I think it's important that you focus on the positive things that have happened. And when you're looking forward another year from now, like I'm hoping that we do an episode on March 9th of next year, which is when I'm recording this, right? And we are saying, look at how much has changed in a year because we're going to concerts. We're hugging people in public. We're not as scared of being out in the world because we have done our part via the vaccine to not eradicate COVID-19 because I think it's important to understand that we won't eradicate it completely, but we have done enough to be able to become more of a society again. That sense of community I talked about, we've had to find those things within our personal lives, in our, you know, not quarantine lives, but in our sort of um, restricted lives. And now we can do those outside the way that we used to, the way that we always wanted to. And I want you to take an opportunity as soon as you can. Don't wait to get the vaccine. Don't necessarily wait for life to come at you with it. Look at the your life right now, where you are in life, and go seize an opportunity because they're not going to be there forever. Turn a negative into a positive. This has been a lot of fun for me. The last year has been a lot of fun, and I look to continue this over the next year and beyond. Uh, as always, to connect, I want you to email soulfully.casual at gmail.com. Our Instagram feed is Soulfully Casual Podcast. And always, always go to www.mattyicemedia.com for this show and all of our shows. We have a lot of content and we're hoping to bring you more. So thanks for tuning in. If you're returning, thank you for coming again. If you're new, welcome aboard. And everybody listening, I will see you down the road. Stay safe.